Oh, it's bright out. Yeah. Now some days we have no idea what we're doing. Some days. <laughs> Most days. <laughs> and I don't mean like we don't know what the hell we're doing. I mean, I mean, oh. we don't know what we're going to go do and explore. <laughs> Most days we don't know what the hell we're doing also. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was confused. <laughs> I can see where that see? would sound crazy. but um, So we're going to go into Winston-Salem today. Mm -hmm. And we're just winging it, man. Yeah. Really don't know what, what the hell is there. And we did a little research online. and Not a whole, whole lot. Doesn't seem like it. No, there's some unique things I want to see. Yeah. So I don't know, we'll bring you along, we'll wing it, come wing it with us, it. and hopefully we'll have some fun. I we'll do, have some fun. I do know the first place we're going, we're going to love, so. You don't know. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. Well, let's go then. Okay. Well, we just arrived at Legends Ice Cream and Churros, and we're gonna take you inside and show you why it's called Legends, because this stuff is legendary. You can probably see some of the pictures on the uh, wall here. That'll kind of give you an idea of what we're gonna go in and taste or see. There's the menu over here. They got these ginormous ice creams with different themes, different flavors, huge accessories. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, look at these churros are filled with stuff. Oh man. A churro filled with chocolate. Oh. Yeah. Then they got the ice creams down here. Oh. All kinds of stuff, man. Loaded Doritos. Oh my gosh, they even got like like hot Cheeto <laughs> like Ooh, with your favorite cups. The salsa verde. These salsa verde chips are amazing. If you haven't had these <laughs> salsa verde chips, get them in the grocery store and either you're welcome or I'm sorry because you're going to be addicted to those rapidly. <laughs> oh wow, look at this place. This place is huge. We got the place to ourselves. It's Monday. And uh but it's it's a cool vibe in here, man. This is cool. Holy crap, man. That was amazing. Phenomenal. That was probably one of the best churros I've ever had in my life. Yes. They did a really good job on those. The way they made that was crazy. And you get to keep your cup. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. He put the churro in the deep fryer. Yeah. And then he started making the shake. Yeah. He like painted the rim of the glass with yeah. like this caramely chocolate, chocolate sauce. Caramel sauce yeah. And he dips it in the chocolate sprinkles. Mm -hmm. Sprinkles are for winners, by the way. That's right. So we got lots of sprinkles. <laughs> and then he put the shake in there and then the whipped cream. cream. And then he took the churro, churro and painted it with the yeah chocolatey caramel sauce. sauce and dipped it in the sprinkles, more sprinkles for the winners. <laughs> and then he put it in there. Yeah. And then I... And then the chocolate bar, the Mexican yeah, chocolate, the chocolate bar. bar. I took a huge bite right out of the middle of that churro <laughs> and it was amazing. And they cater. You could have a party of this. Oh, man. That's what I'm talking about. Milkshake party. Yeah. A milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Damn right. I can show you, but I don't have to charge. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really cool. It's a cool vibe in there. Couldn't film Very a lot because cool. the music, they had the music was playing. loud. But it's like a Mexican wrestling theme. Yeah. You know, all the wrestlers with the masks. Yeah. And uh, what, what did he call the um, the wrestler? Choco Libre or something like that? Yeah. I don't know. But it was a fun little, fun little, Very cool little place. place. And now we're going to go... Now we can go sightsee. Do something else. <laughs> How do you get that out of the way? Yeah. After I, I feel heavy. Yeah. I got to go walk some of these off. It's so worth it. It's worth it. God. Well, we just arrived to a historic landmark in Winston-Salem. Let me show it to you. This is the old shell station. That's pretty cool, man. This was uh, built in the 1930s. There were eight of these built. And this is the last one remaining. It's a National Historic Landmark now, so they can't alter it or change it in any way. 
but it's really cool. I guess it was a marketing idea in the 20s. They built them in the 30s. Uh, didn't do so well. Went uh, under. And uh, But they did like the nostalgic of it. And so that's why they made it a National Historic Landmark. So Yeah, in 76. That was a long time ago that they made it yeah. a landmark. That's pre-WAG. But yeah, pretty cool. I mean, these old uh, pumps are really cool too. Can you imagine using these back in the old day? No, absolutely not. Look how little this this building is. It's just a little. I guess it's just enough to where you could go inside and and pay, and that's it. Maybe you had a couple little candy bars or soda pops or something in it there, seems but like it was once open. Oh yeah, I'm sure it was. No, I mean because there's like a little novelty man in a in a oh, shell. Oh, you mean uniform. open to like go like, like tour to like look inside yeah. i thought you meant like open for business like of course it was open for business at some point but i'm sure you could get the camera in there you could see what i'm talking all about. right let me see if i can get in there okay yeah this little dude in there yeah some goods <laughs> so yeah you can i guess they at one point you used to let you in there to go tour it or maybe they just Maybe they just assume people will stick their face on the glass. What are you doing? Bend over. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll give you an enema. <laughs> I guess they actually used to do service over here too because they have like a little covered area here where maybe a car would pull in and maybe you had oil change or some work and then they had this like ramp lift where the car would roll up and they could probably get up under the car and work on it and then Maybe some storage there, oil changes, quick, quick stuff. I don't think it would be anything too extensive. I mean, this is a small place, a small operation, and this is outdoors, so you'd be working on the car outside. So you wouldn't want to be like rebuilding a transmission out here or anything like that. Probably just quick stuff. Yeah. Well, surprise, surprise. We're in a cemetery. And the reason we're at this cemetery is because this is the grave of Daniel Boone's mother. Parents. Pa parents. Parents. Mom and dad. Yeah. Dad. Mom. Yeah. They have, they have restored this and put a brick wall around it. To preserve. But you can see the little headstone is the mother's. And then the bigger headstone is the father's. They used to be freestanding here themselves. But to prevent them from falling down, they bricked it around there. And then they get put a little placard here. Squire and Sarah Morgan Boone. Parents of Daniel Boone. But uh, that's pretty cool. And then and the his brother, brother is brother's there. over here, right? Yeah. Israel Boone. Born May 20th, 1726 and died June 26th, 1756. So 30 years old. Yeah, it's been a it's been a hot second. But there's a lot of cool old historic creepy graves out here it always creeped me out when they have like this fence around them this creepy old iron fence and I wonder like uh, how I mean this must have been an important person to have their own little they basically got their own little graveyard here for themselves and this was oh, this doctor dr. Lanier born 1815 died 1872 an honest man the noblest work of creation. Huh. Well, those are nice words. Yeah. Nice sentiments. Yeah. Daniel Boone is actually buried in Frankfort, Kentucky. We'll show you that later this summer. Yeah, we're going to be <laughs> in Lexington this summer, and it's just right outside Lexington. It's actually over by, I think it's the Buffalo Trace and Woodford Reserve, and that area is where Frankfort is, I think. Yeah. And so we're going to be going over there to do some tastings and uh, maybe we'll pop over and see Daniel Boone's grave. But it was cool to see his parents and his brother's grave. And it's, it's in the middle of town. Look, yeah. there's a tractor supply right there. <laughs> oh, this is a creepy thing. Look at this. All right, I just squirreled, but I just saw this thing out of the ground. And this is weird, man. But you can't, you can't tell anything. The, the headstone... This headstone, the old headstone's broken off. This has nothing on it, but it's just like a tomb. 
I feel like this was a child. Oh yeah, it's definitely a kid. It's too small to be a an adult. Every time we come out to these places, though, you always wonder, like, what's the story, man? Yep. You know, you wish you could just know more. Yeah, a lot of old stones out here. Really old stones. 1700s, 1800s. Um, you even see some of the flags back here have the colonial American flags. So that's from, like, colonial times, those back there. And just really old. I mean, obviously, if Daniel Boone's parents are here, it's it's old. Um, not very well maintained. And then one of the reasons why is because all these people's family, they're gone. Their descendants are like gone, gone. And usually you, ha you have to pay to upkeep the cemetery or the plot. And then when all your people are just gone... There's other than the city or the county or whoever will maintain will maintain it a little bit. They'll mow, they'll keep stuff cut down, but they're not they're not restoring headstones unless it's historic, like the Boone family. Yeah. Uh, they're not making any improvements or making sure that your headstone stays in place. They don't prevent it from falling over. They don't replace it if you can't read it anymore. They don't do any kind of improvements like that. Yeah. See, here you go. Here's one of the flags. And it says that this guy, Isaac Jones, was a Revolutionary War patriot. And he paid his taxes, apparently it says. So that's good. Good dude. <laughs> paid his taxes. Well, now we're at a place called Play It Again Sports. And we come here quite a bit. This is a great place for RVers to come because they sell pre-owned sporting goods equipment. Yeah. So we've gotten discs here for disc golf. Yes. We've gotten putters. Putters. We've got... Uh, they got pickleball stuff. Yeah. And so it's 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 nice, good stuff. I'm thinking next I want tennis rackets. Yeah? Yeah. We're gonna do some tennis? Yeah. Alright. But this is a good place because you don't have to, you know, spend a bunch of money on brand yeah. new stuff. You can come get used stuff. It's quality stuff, it's but it's yeah. used. And it's like a fraction of the price. Exactly. And what I'm looking for today is cornhole bags. But we will look at the discs too, and we'll look at the pickleball stuff and yeah. all the stuff in here. But uh, it's always a good place. Mm -hmm. I mean, for if you're an active you RVer like, and hey, you want to do some sporting stuff, they even sell like used bikes and stuff. Yeah. You want a variety of things, and it's a realistic price to do all that. Yeah, yeah. workout equipment, whatever. Lots of stuff that would apply to the RV life. You don't want to invest a ton of money in stuff that you have to haul around. Exactly. So, all right, let's go see what they got. got. Oh, this is a big one. I don't think we've been in one this big before. Look at all this stuff. There's stuff everywhere. Any inver inver inversion table? <laughs> yeah, they go right in the middle of the living room there. That'd be perfect. Yeah. Look at all the discs. They have tons of discs. And if you if you've played disc golf before, you know that they have different types for distances, different mm -hmm. speeds, and all that stuff. So. Instead of, and they're pretty expensive if you buy them new. Yes. For the for the nice discs. Yes, it is. So, play it against sports is a good place to come and get your discs. They do have, looks like they have some cornhole bags here, but they're not. Professional bags. They're not pro bags. Those are recreational bags. Yeah. They may have some others somewhere else we'll around here. We'll walk around, but yeah, these are just, I think these are actual corn. They're actually like corn filled. Yeah. They don't, they nice don't hold up very well. Look, whatever you can think of. They got bocce. They got this guy where the, the the thing where you throw the ropes and they swing around the thing, and then they got table tennis, they got croquets, they got glow in the dark yard darts. Oh, yard darts! And then they even got these newer, like the spike balls and the wipeouts and the um, bad mittens and the horseshoes down here. They got a little bit of everything. There's all the golf stuff back here. That's what we did. And the reason that we came to this place in the first place was because when COVID hit, uh, you couldn't get equipment. You couldn't get like putters. You couldn't get paddles at these resorts that they normally would lend out. They weren't lending anything out. So we came to play against sports, got putters. Now we have our own putters, our own balls. So no matter where we go, we didn't have to go and ask to borrow their stuff or rent their stuff. We have our own our own putters and stuff. <laughs> well, swing and a miss. No cornhole bags. All they had was the generic ones. But it is a cool place. It is cool. Lots of stuff in there. And yeah, this was a nice one. 
if you had a sticks and bricks and you want to build like a home gym, this would be the spot to do it because they sell all that equipment and stuff too. They had great stuff. Over home, you can see I'm doing all the work. <laughs> oh, it smells good in here, man. Ooh, does that smell good? Uh, yeah, we're doing the Mississippi pot roast thing. We did the chicken. Hang on, let me mute this. It's freaking loud. Um, yeah, we did the chicken last time, and this time we did the roast. Oh, look at that. Oh, it just oh, fogged up my... Oh, uh, I just fogged up my <laughs> phone, but you can see that. Oh, it's nice bubbly goodness in there. That's going to be good. There's Scouts up on his ramp. Sometimes... Oh, all day there. Yeah, he probably did spend all day there. Sometimes when we come home, we get to play hide-and-go-seek. Let's see where he is, but he's easy to find today. He's probably getting too warm up there on his thing. But anyway, thanks for carrying in the Amazon. My pleasure. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. Well, it wasn't a terribly exciting day, but it was fun. No, it was nice to get out today. Yeah, it's it going to be crappy for the next couple of days. Apparently, yeah. So it was so, good to get out. Not super exciting, but um, mm -hmm. hey, that's RV life. That's right. They can't all be winter days. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it anyway, whatever, um, you know, whatever you got out of it. Yeah. We had a good time just kicking around. Yep. That's what most days look like for us mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans fall around on the road, everything you need to know right down in the description. Appreciate you watching. See you next time.